Okay, this video is about a program called Tidal Weight, and I originally wrote it in 2008, so it uh, was a little bit old, but I brought it up to date here in 2014, making sure it works on Windows 8 and fixing some bugs and getting it documented, so now it's an open source software and other people can use it. What it does, as the name would imply, is it's a monitoring program. Uh, you tell it what you, program you want to launch with what arguments, and then you can also give it a regular expression. And in any of the windows of that process or any process it launches, if it detects that regular expression, you have a couple things you can tell it to do. And one is to take a screen snapshot, another is to ask the program to quit. And there are some other options as well, but this is a, this is a neat kind of out-of-band way to sneakily have your test scripts be able to communicate with something like, like a browser that it doesn't have to get a plug-in or anything special because you can, in JavaScript, you can set the window title just in your code. So it was designed to be non-invasive and very easy to use. And let me show you the command line options. So there's a bunch of them. There's the program you want to run, what arguments you want that program to have, the regular expression string that you want to be matching, how often you want it to check the regular expression because it's a timer thread on a loop. The If you want a screenshot at the moment of the regular expression matching, you can ask for that. You can also ask it to close the window if it gets a match. You can uh, search all the windows of all processes, not just the ones that are launched by you. You specify a timeout, which is how long to let the program run before you just kill it. Um, in the case that you don't match the regular expression, and a snapshot of the picture at that moment, or a snapshot at the moment of crashing, some help in case you run a program that was already running. It will say, hey, you're already running that, so do you want to wait? Give you a message box. Uh, and then positioning of the window and some debug information. Then you get back these different return codes, so your batch file, or whatever called it, can know which of the conditions uh, ended up happening. So, as I say, the, the motivation was test, and specifically I was working with some people on uh, their web application, and they needed to do, you know, f have it working in four different browsers. It had to work in Internet Explorer and Opera and Firefox and Safari, yet it seemed that every day someone would check in something where the web pages would not even get to all the way through initialization, some little change would not work in one of the tested browsers because they didn't test. And I thought, well, it would be nice if we could automate that and to do it in this non-invasive way. So here you see a, a little sample page that runs some setup code in JavaScript. It really just phases through some messages and then changes the title at the end. So it says running setup code, and then it does some messages, and then when they're all done, it says, OK, let's change it to indicate that, that the page construction has finished and we can make a batch file out of that. In this case, this is one that does the kitchen sink, so it wants a picture of no matter what happens, if there's a crash or if the condition is met or if it times out. Um, so it saves those files, positions the windows, or asks to, uh, so for each of the browsers from that time. And we can go ahead and run that and see what happens. So you can see some extra debug output here. Uh, one of the big tricks and, and things that makes this such a complicated program when it was supposed to be simple is that to get the control I had, I had to make it a, a Windows debugger. It's written to the Windows debug API, and so it's kind of complicated. It gets all these weird notifications, and you have to handle them properly. But other, if you take something like Internet Explorer that you run it and then it immediately returns, that's because the iExplore uh, XE is just a launcher. and you can't get this sequential test uh, going if you don't have some way of monitoring how the processes are connected. And I decided that doing it as a debugger was probably the best idea, uh, as opposed to trying to search the process tree and guess, just because it also gave more control in the cases of crashes. So I could get, um, you know, if you managed to crash the browser or if this was something you use for a non browsing program, because it works for 
any program. All right, so we went through and they all uh, happened to succeed. We can look at the directory where it put the screen snapshots and we have these four pictures of success and there was Firefox saying, you know, hey, you were lucky it worked. And so that was when it, the moment that it matched the, the complicated page string, it took a picture and then it sent the close message. Same going for Internet Explorer and Opera. And Opera is an interesting one, by the way. It, it, it has a minimum window width, so you can't tell it to be small. Uh, you can request a size, but it won't necessarily obey it. And there's Safari. Uh, so those four all had success that time. But what would happen if we went in and messed with it so that it wasn't going to be successful? Let's just put some garbage in there. All right, that, that looks great. So let's save that. Now, let's run it again. And what's going to happen this time? It's going to be different because uh, you'll notice that it's stopped right there with the running setup code string in the browser. Firefox, if you don't have Firebug or some kind of console installed or showing the status bar or something, it's not going to tell you that something went wrong. It's just going to have a dead page. So what's happening now is we're waiting for the timeout. And the timeout will happen some moment here. There it goes. Internet Explorer comes up. It's a little noisier. It's got this dialogue telling me that that nonsense that I typed in was, was nonsense. So it's going to sit here and wait for a while. And like I said, this is before uh, Chrome, but the same, you know, same principles apply. Uh, you can use this on any program, not just a browser, but it does happen to be particularly nice to do this sort of verification and it's not a huge investment. So this is something you can put into your project, start using right now uh, to test and make sure that your pages are good and can at least get to a certain point. You know, it, This isn't a robot that pushes buttons in your browser. There's some fancier test suites that can be used for that. But this is just that baseline, making sure that the programs work. But I'm sure other people can come up with applications or ideas for how to use it besides the one that I did. Uh, and it certainly was a pain to write. Uh, these days, I, I keep having to say with these older code bases that my C++ has gotten much better in six years. Uh, and also C++ has gotten better with C++11. So I'd, I wouldn't necessarily uphold these code bases as best practices. But let's refresh this here. So now we refresh the snapshots and we see they all timed out. So it's taken that picture of the sad, you know, still running setup code so we could see what went wrong at that point. And you can do this with a crashing as well. Because it's a debugger, that's another nice feature to have that type control. But I've heard tell of these other programs, things like Auto Hotkey, uh, which is the open source version of, of the closed source AutoWit that was temporarily open source and it wound up being a fork. But these are automation programs with which you could probably do some amount of similar things. I, I don't know it, how easy it would be to get this kind of debug control and what kind of hoops you'd have to jump through. And it's all a matter of what you consider acceptable or unacceptable. You might use an approach that is looking at, you know, not thinking about process IDs, but it's just trusting anything that has Internet Explorer in the title is belongs to the Internet Explorer process, and you can sort of chase down that. And you might be able to get it to be uh, able to do most of what Title Weight can do. But I like the sort of rigorous debugger implementation, uh, even if it's a bit heavy-handed. And you can see just how much uh, sort of code for something so seemingly simple that takes uh, to just process all the different cases and, and noticing when uh, what kind of messages are important or unimportant, and being able to spawn a thread that waits on a uh, process handle for its, uh, for its quitting. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff in there. Uh, it's commented OK, so you should be able to go in there and read it. But yeah, definitely, uh, if you have any questions about it, contact me. If it doesn't work properly or how you expect, then raise an issue on the GitHub. And uh, looking forward to seeing how people might use this program. And that is all.